five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. Atlas V takes flight, sending Lucy to uncover the fossils of our solar system. Power clear. Party 180 propellant utilization has gone to close loop control. The vehicle has begun the pitch yaw roll maneuver. Now, 30 seconds into flight, vehicle is 0.6 miles in altitude, traveling at 939 miles per hour. Body 180 performance continues to look good at this time. Engine pump speeds and injection pressures are in family for this thrust level. Vehicle attitude remains stable at this time. Attitude rates near zero in all, uh, in all axes. Now at T plus 70 seconds into flight, vehicle is four miles in altitude, 0.2 miles downrange distance, traveling at 1,200 miles per hour. Mark one, Alice is now supersonic. Vehicle is now passing through max Q, maximum dynamic pressure. The vehicle is now throttling down slightly. R180 engine parameters continue to look nominal after the prior adjustment to the thrust level. Approximately two minutes remain in the Atlas booster phase of flight. The Atlas V rocket weighs now just one half of what it did at launch, burning propellant at a rate of 2,600 pounds per second. Vehicle is now executing closed loop steering. Center 5 Center Reaction Control System is now pressurizing the flight levels. So beautiful launch sequence there. Uh, we do have uh, another minute and a half or so to go with the booster in operation, uh, getting uh, loose. We're now just under three minutes into flight. Atlas is 33 miles in altitude, 59 miles downrange distance, traveling at 5,600 miles per hour. So Lucy being lifted up out of the atmosphere by the booster, getting on its way into a park orbit uh, before we get towards... Uh, All first stage vehicle systems are operating as expected at this time. Future, uh, future portions of the launch activity, we have the, the Centaur multiple burns ahead and spacecraft separation. And the big milestone we should see, Josh, coming up is booster engine cutoff, which would be the first stage cutoff and then stage separation. The main separation. engine is now throttling to maintain a constant 5G acceleration limit. We're going to see a few things happen pretty rapidly. The, the booster will cut off just after four minutes. And then within the next 15 seconds after that, we should see the Atlas separate from the Centaur and then the Centaur engine ignite for its first burn. Centaur has begun the boost phase chill-down sequence. And the RD-180 is now throttling to maintain a constant 4.6 G acceleration limit. Boost phase chill-down sequence has completed. And we have Pico booster engine cutoff and a successful stage separation event. So what you're seeing on screen is an animation that's being driven by actual telemetry. Please on the RL-10. So we are watching these things uh, in an animation happen here, but they're happening in real time as well. And as that's one. We have ignition for the first burn. All right, so there we go. Uh, we should see the, fair, the fairing jettison here. We have indication of good tail of fairing jettison. And there we go. All right, Nick, so that wraps up the, the first round of, of major milestones here. Uh, still very much in the middle of dynamic flight. The uh, system on the RL-10 is now in an open-loop burn-off mode to burn off excess fuel in the early portion of this burn.
So walk us quickly through, Mick, what are we looking for uh, in the next, in this burn and the next one? So this burn is going to end with uh, Miko uh, getting uh, Centaur and Lucy into its park orbit around Earth. And then we will then get into MESS-2, which will get us into that transfer orbit, getting Lucy on its way. Awesome. So that's going to do it for now, uh, finishing up the initial launch activities, everything sounding like it's going perfectly. Right, we're in the middle now of the second burn of the Centaur. Mick, talk to us about uh, what the second burn is. So main engine start did occur uh, just a few minutes ago, and this will get uh, Centaur and Lucy into its transfer orbit, leaving the park orbit around Earth, heading into that orbit, heading uh, to get Lucy on her way to the Trojan asteroids. So very important burn. This will last about six minutes. Uh, and to get her the velocity and everything she needs to go to get on her way to, uh, to to the Trojan asteroids. There you go. So just under about four minutes left in this burn. Uh, so going back today, uh, we did kick off at 534 on the button uh, and I got a report um, storage pressures are stable during the burn. Uh, from storage bottle pressures look good. From the ULA commentator Rob Kesselman, uh, ULA always expecting excellence, but he reported that it the booster performed better than expected. Uh, I'm not sure what's better than excellent, but they got it today. <laughs> yeah, it just means we had some uh, great performance from the first stage booster in the RD-180, uh, putting Centaur into the proper orbit uh, and that injection that they needed uh, for for getting Lucy on her way. And now that we're into main engine start two, uh, that just means we have a, a more precise uh, uh, trajectory and everything's looking good. The spacecraft customer and ULA and launch services provider pro, uh, program are very happy at this point. Yeah, so uh, Lucy, after this burn is completed, uh, we'll then wait a, a few more minutes before we get into uh, separation from the Centaur. And at that point, Lucy will be set up for her first orbit, her first major orbit of Earth, uh, which will be just, just under one year. Uh, to complete and then have the, Earth, the first Earth gravity assist flyby where Lucy will get close enough to Earth where uh, she'll literally just be, sl it'll, it's like, kind of like a slingshot effect where she will just pick up speed flying past Earth to start getting out towards where the, uh, the asteroid belt and the Trojan asteroids are. Yeah, first of three gravity first of three, assists, that's right. so it'll, it'll be a, a big move for her. That's right, and so uh, kind of, again, thinking about the complexity of this, it's a little bit shocking to think about the first asteroid uh, won't be explored, won't be passed by for another four years. Uh, and then beyond that, there's another gravity assist later on down the ride after a few uh, Trojan asteroids being explored. Yeah, 12-year mission, uh, very excited about this. We just started this this morning, right? And uh, the team did a great job, to, uh, you know, developing this trajectory and making sure that we could get out to those Lagrange points that needed where those asteroids well, are. Is it Lagrange or Lagrange? It's because Lagrange. I think depending upon what part of America or the part of the world you're from, it could be a different different uh, pronunciation uh, you there. You know, Daryl reminds me all the time it's Lagrange, but if you're from the south, it's probably something else. I don't know. But Lagrange points <laughs> where, the, uh, where the Trojan asteroids are in L4 and L5, um, and you know that's that's a very important. I mean, this team did an excellent job in this trajectory design, and Centaur is on target to deliver Lucy on that uh, that path. Yeah, so the Lagrange points, a uh, little explanation there. So for every pair of planetary bodies that are interacting, that are kind of engaged, uh, there are five Lagrange points, uh, and those five Lagrange points are in very consistent places. Uh, and what that means is that a lot of people have this uh, notion that if you're in low Earth orbit, the space station, for instance, that you are in zero gravity. This is actually a misconception. You're in what we call microgravity. Micro -gravity, yes. Yeah. Uh, and so as you're... Uh, in orbit, you're essentially falling around the Earth. Uh, and so gravity is still about 98% of what it is right here now. Uh, and so when you're at a Lagrange point, there's actually a balance of gravitational forces where you're able to essentially sit there in what really is a, a zero gravity. Uh, that's probably a more appropriate place to describe zero gravity. Uh, again, you mentioned Lagrange points four and five. Uh, that's where these two groups of Trojan asteroids hang out. Uh, and these are actually nowhere near Jupiter. Uh, so they're Jupiter's they're Jupiter's, sorry, we're getting calls here. Uh, good performance here on the Centaur still as they're about to wrap up this uh, this second burn. Again, uh, preparing for spacecraft Second, Miko 2. Second, Miko 2. And we have Miko 2. That's a good sign right there, main engine cutoff two. That means uh, Centaur has done its job, performed, Centaur and uh, will be uh, 
coasting for just a few minutes as we get ready for spacecraft separation and Centaur make sure she's pointing in the right direction. That's right. Uh, and so just finishing that thought, the Lagrange points four and five are roughly equidistant uh, from the the Sun and Jupiter, making isosceles or equilateral triangles. Uh, if you if you're ready for your math at 6 a.m. <laughs> uh, or whatever time it is right now, uh, we're we're watching our our, our mission clock here, uh, and so uh, essentially they are the same distance from Jupiter as Jupiter is from the Sun, uh, which is roughly 465 million miles. So these points are very far from Jupiter, very far from the Sun, uh, but pretty exciting. And and Mick, uh, LSP, no stranger to exploring the solar system, no stranger to mission success with science missions. Yeah, you know, we are very happy to be working with United Launch Alliance, our commercial partner today with this Atlas 5401. Uh, you know, this mission started seven years ago for some of these folks, uh, some longer, and as uh, the Atlas 5401 was selected for this mission, LSP took all those requirements from our spacecraft customer, and uh, we looked at those, and we decided what needed to be done, and we selected the Atlas 5 for this mission. Our uh, in team of engineers, scientists, and analysts uh, worked very closely with the spacecraft customer and United Launch Alliance. And uh, as a result, we had a successful liftoff at 5.34 a.m. today, the very beginning of our window and the beginning of our science period. Uh, so very happy so far. Uh, still waiting for that spacecraft separation and making sure the spacecraft healthy. healthy. But uh, so far, everything has been going just as we had predicted. Yeah, very good. Uh, a reminder coming up ahead, we have spacecraft separation. Uh, as you say there, a countdown to when we're expecting to see that happen. Uh, what you're seeing on screen is a graphical representation based on real telemetry data. So we believe this is, we are confident this is what's happening in space right now. That's not actually a live video. Stabilized at the coast attitude. Uh, and so again, there you see on your time, we're expecting that spacecraft separation in about nine minutes from now. So. Uh, after that, uh, we will have uh, a brief period where we'll, be, we'll, we'll wait to start solar array deploy. Uh, then we'll have, uh, that takes about 20 minutes to deploy the solar arrays, big, beautiful solar arrays. And then we will, once those are up and powered, we would expect a couple minutes later to be able to get that acquisition yep. of signal. That's a very scary time for the spacecraft yeah. team. They'll be waiting for that for sure. So obviously a big moment, especially for the for the ULA team, this would be the end of their, their time. Centaur is now spinning up in anticipation of spacecraft separation. 15 seconds. Huge moment here for all the teams, actually. A successful launch. Five this seconds. is what it's all about. Spacecraft set. We have indication of successful separation of the Lucy spacecraft.